Hello, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Steve, and I'm part of the customer success team here at Snap Projections. I'm joined as well by Anu and Yulia, who will be helping with the presentation and with answering your questions. Uh, we do have great news. Today's financial planning session has been reviewed by FP Canada and qualifies for one FP Canada approved CE credit. So that will be eligible for a continuing education credit of either the category of financial planning for FP Canada certificates and or one CE credit in the category of professional development for MFDA licensed representatives. Um, now this is only accessible for attendees today. So if you are able to stay for the whole session, uh, we'll go through the details of accessing that credit shortly. During today's session, if you do have any questions, please feel free to submit those to us through the GoToWebinar portal. So if you click on the left on the question mark symbol, you'll be able to submit a question to ask along the way. Uh, we will be answering those live as best as we can. So one of us will either get back to you in the chat or we might answer the question live through the presentation. And if we're not able to answer your question live, we will get back to you within the next few days in order to uh, answer your question by email. We'll be answering questions kind of spaced throughout today's session, and then we'll also have a dedicated Q&A period towards the end. Two hours after this session is completed, attendees who stayed for the full session will receive an email with the video recording and a request to respond with your full name for your CE certificate. So it's a very quick three question survey just related to your first name, last name and email address where you would like that certificate sent. Once you complete this submission form, you'll receive a personalized CE certificate by March 31st. Um, and that will be once again eligible for the two categories. Today's session is going to be broken into two parts. The first is a review of the most recently released features um, to make sure that you're aware of them, how to use them, and what types of planning capabilities that allows for you. Um, once I'm done with that, I'm gonna transfer it over to Anu, who is going to take us through the process of rebasing a previous year's projection into the current calendar year so that you can update the assumptions and values to continue working on that client file. We'll also talk about how to discuss progress towards the client's goal. So comparing the old plan to the new plan and breaking that out a bit into factors that the client can control and things that are out of their control. And then at the end, we'll have dedicated time to get back to as many questions as possible. If you do have any questions uh, while you're using SNAP, you can go to the help section in the top right corner of the software and then click on help center. That's going to take you to our website with all of our webinar recordings, articles, videos. It will also have our contact information to be able to give us a call or send us an email. We just revamped the layout of this page, so it's a bit easier to navigate and find what you're looking for. Um, so once again, you can either give us a call, send us an email, or find the, the key information that you're looking for by searching for key terms or navigating through the different categories. With that, I'm going to jump into the software and we're gonna get started reviewing some of the updates that have been made to the software over the last year. So from the client's page, I'm going to be using the default projection for John Snapper today. This is a plan that's added to all users' accounts uh, when the account is initially set up. It's just a, a great sample projection for a client approaching retirement. And we wanna start with a, a default plan so that we can cover as much ground and quickly navigate through the software to show you all of the new enhancements that have been made. So I'll click John Snapper. We'll go into the already created planning page. And then from here, we're gonna to navigate to the new updates. The first section that I wanna highlight is underneath the scenario setup. So in the top left, if you go to scenario setup and then to incomes, you'll see that the input page is very similar to before, but we've added three new columns to make it easier to customize incomes in your projection. The first is this indexing column. By default, to be conservative, we've assumed that there's no indexing for new incomes that are added to the plan, but you can change the indexing rate either by entering in a specific percentage value or by clearing the, the value altogether, you can link the income to the general inflation rate that has been created in the plan. 
So if you set this to general inflation, once again, by deleting any value that currently shows in that field, that will make sure that as you update the plan in the future and change the inflation rate, SNAP will automatically apply those to your desired incomes. We've also added two new columns to control the start time and end time of the income. So by default, if the from age value is blank, that means that it's going to start in the first year of the projection, and then it's going to continue every year until the year that you have your two age set. So these can be very helpful. Um, here's a perfect example with income. We want that to stop once the client retires, of course, but if we were adding something like rental income and we wanted it to start in three years once they buy their property, or we wanted it to end in 15 years once they sell their property, we can set up those from and to ages directly from this page. Another customizable setting for these from and to ages is using this black gear symbol. So in the cell, when your cursor is in that cell, you'll see the black gear symbol that you can click on and that allows you to actually prorate an income for a partial year receipt. So if the client is going to retire instead of at the end of 2029, maybe they're going to work partway through the year until say June 30th. Now that we've updated that date, it's going to give us half a year's income in that final year of work. So now to see the changes, we can go to the planning page and you'll see that the employment income is now being indexed at our in inflation rate. And then the final year, once they're retired, they're retiring partway through the year, so they're earning a partial income. In addition to being able to set up your scenario setup settings, you can also override any of these annual values from the planning page itself. So if the client is planning to take some time off once they turn 60, we could click on their employment income for that year and adjust it to a custom value. So maybe they're gonna only earn $60,000 that year. So we can override the income and that's going to replace what we initially set up from the scenario setup page. And then if we wanna clear that, that override, we can either click on the X here or we can click on the dollar value and then check the box to clear the override. Another common use case for overrides would be adding income in future years. So maybe the client's going to retire, they're gonna take a year off to enjoy themselves, and then they're going to start a hobby woodworking business that might earn $10,000 a year. And so we'll copy that down for a four year period until age 70. So you can do as much planning as you want from the scenario setup section on the incomes page, and then you can refine the details from the planning page with overrides as desired. Now we could always enter this um, retirement income as a new separate line item on this scenario setup page. So we could add an income and just enter in a second line that starts at age 67 and ends at age 70. Whichever option works best for you is, is perfectly, um, will work well in the software. So those are the updates related to incomes. If we go next to the expenses page, you'll see that we've made a few uh, adjustments here. Previously in SNAP projections, the base expenses was referred to as after-tax spending. And this is one of the most important changes that we've made over the last year, um, and something that I really wanna focus some time on to make sure that it's, it's as clear and usable as possible. So the base expense amount is intended to be the annual spending need that the client requires for everything that is outside of the projection. So within SNAP, the software is already calculating things like taxes and assuming that those are being paid by the client's cash flow. It's also calculating the debt payments for any mortgage that you've entered. It's calculating your contributions to investments. So those are all already taken care of within the client's cash flow. The base expenses is intended to represent any spending that the client requires that is outside of the projection. So things like groceries, transportation, property taxes, any recurring annual expense that is expected to be incurred that is not being modeled elsewhere in the software. We can customize that value from this expense setup page or on the planning page, we can customize the value directly from the, the real base column. And we can change it for the whole period of the plan by copying any change down to age 100 or we could change it for a very specific period. So maybe we want to do a, 
a tiered retirement process where they're spending a bit less every decade. So you can change the real base expense value here. And the real expense target is tied to the cash flow management start age. So whatever year you turn on the cash flow management in SNAP, that's when you're going to be able to set a target spending to have the software automatically deposit any surpluses or withdraw to meet any shortfall. In addition to the base expense, which is typically in, uh, you know, intended to be fairly consistent over time, you can also add new itemized expenses. So this would be things like travel expense, maybe that's $10,000 a year indexed at the general inflation rate starting at retirement. And we can highlight that within the report so that on the cash flow, cash outflows chart, you'll be able to have this itemized within the, the uh, legend and be able to have a conversation with your client about that, uh, that specific goal that they have. We could also add other expenses like a renovation for $20,000. And maybe this one we won't index with inflation because that's the exact quote that they've received. And we're gonna do that at age 66. And it's just gonna be one year of $20,000. So we'll put from age 66 to age 66. And it'll be every year because it's just that one year that it's applied to. And we'll highlight that in the, in the report. Now, what can be tempting to do is to adjust the start age of this, um, this transaction to actually align with when the client is doing the renovation. So maybe they're planning to do the renovation over their summer. So it's gonna be from June until August. And if you put June and August into these, these fields for the date, it's going to prorate this $20,000 value. So on the planning page, it's not actually gonna show a $20,000 expense because it's gonna prorate for that smaller period of the year that you've indicated by customizing these dates. So if you want to show this full annual amount on the planning page, you'll just leave the start date as January 1st, leave the end date as December 31st, and that way it's going to apply one full calendar year of this $20,000 cost. If we go to the planning page, You'll see that once again, we have full access to customize these expenses as needed. So we could override a specific value or continue it down. Um, so once you've added the expense, it creates a brand new column that you can customize on the planning page. The next enhancement that was added over the last year is related to the capital assets. So from the scenario setup assets page, you can now enter in a first home savings account so if the client made a contribution last year, they might already have $8,000 in that account. We'll select first home savings in the type, and then we'll enter in the asset allocation, just like all other capital assets. And you'll see that there's a first home savings account tab where you can customize the account settings, things like when it was opened, whether they've made previous year's contributions. So here I'll enter in $8,000. And this is just going to allow SNAP to track the contribution room and provide guardrails to prevent over contributing to that account. Uh, we do have a full dedicated short video and article for the first home savings account. So if you go to help in the top right corner, go down to help center, you can type in first home savings account on our help site and then access that article and the training video. So this is common for all of the features that we'll review today. If you want to learn more about the dedicated functionality, you can go to the website, search the key terms, and then find additional videos and, and training. Today's session is really just to make sure that these tools are, are on your radar and accessible. If we go to the planning page, you'll see that there have been quite a few changes made to this uh, section of the software over the last year. The first thing that people tend to notice is that there are now these new columns on the very left-hand side of the planning page. There's, so there's a net cash flow column and sometimes there will be a cash balance column. So to illustrate, if I were to make this spending need very high for the first year of retirement, that's going to deplete a lot of the client's assets in the plan. And so now we have these two columns showing up under the cash flow management section. And as we scroll down in retirement, we can see that the client eventually runs out of money and that's creating an annual shortfall. And the shortfall is being accumulated within the cash balance. 
So the reason that these columns were moved to the left is because they're very important to be aware of and address within your projections. So if there's a surplus, you'll want to address that typically by adding a non-registered investment account to the plan. If there's a shortfall, then we may need to either reduce the client's spending goal or delay their retirement or some other step to, to address that shortfall. The real base expenses, this has been, this has replaced the previous column that was called after-tax spending. So it's the same functionality. You can still set your target spending and you can still use the recommendations tool to calculate your sustainable spending level, uh, but it's now just referred to as the base expenses. You'll see that the sections of the software have also been reorganized to align directly with the scenario setup. So if we go to scenario setup, you'll see that there's a page for expenses. We also now have a section related to everything that's been entered on that page. So it's easier if you have a value that you want to edit, you can either click on this column header and that's going to take you into the expenses page, or you can know that because the planning page and scenario setup are structured in the same way, you'll know where those values were input and how to change them. We also have the ability to collapse and expand sections of the planning page. So right now there's lots of detail, lots of columns. It might be overwhelming if you're having a client presentation or you're trying to refer to specific values on this page. So you might wanna collapse certain sections in order to save room and then really just expand the, the area that you're having a particular conversation on. If we were to collapse the capital assets, we can see things like total all type accounts, which is a really helpful value to be able to refer to. So collapsing and expanding can be helpful um, for accessing more information or focusing the conversation. Another change that we made is the ability to uh, move quickly through the planning page from left to right. So for most people, it's easy to scroll up and down. A lot of mouse and, and cursors have you know, up and down scroll, but moving left to right was previously typically hard. You needed to use the, the scroll wheel or you needed to use a keyboard shortcut to, to move left and right. Now you can actually click on any value or any section of the planning page and just drag your cursor left to right. So if you wanna to go to the very right hand side, you would just click on a cell and then move your cursor left and right. And that's going to allow you to move throughout the plan. You can also do it up and down, um, so that's a quick way to navigate throughout the planning page section. The next series of, of enhancements that we made were related to the corporation. So if I click add corporation, I can input a title. And the majority of the, the changes were related to dispositions. So we expanded the methods of disposition available. So you can now use either share sale, which is kind of the equivalent of a pipeline strategy that realizes the capital gain on the sale, or you can use a wind up, which is a distribution strategy using dividends to pay out from the corporation. And you can also change the timing of the disposition. So previously it was only allowable to dispose of a corporation as of death or post-mortem. In this case, you can now change the specific year that you want to end a corporation in your projection. So that would be related to the disposition functionality. Um, and just once again, highlighting the corporate insurance module that we added last year. Um, so if you want to enter in a policy, you would just select the type, the insured party. And then once you have the insurance quote information up, you can actually directly paste into this uh, field from any Excel file or quote provider. So if you just put your cursor in the first field, you can copy and paste directly into the software to avoid having to input manual data. The um, current area of the software that we're working on quite a bit in, in preparation for our snapshot feature, which will be coming out shortly, related to a one-page executive summary report capability, is enhancements to the client report. The major uh, change that we've made is we've now created this report builder section of the SNAP software. So if you go report builder, 
you'll see that you can now customize what pages you would like to include in your client report and what order you would like them to show up in. So on the right, you have a gallery of all pages available for this projection. So if it's related to this projection, you'll be able to select it from here. And then here we have included pages. So these are all of the pages right now that will show up in my report if I were to click generate PDF. So you can move pages from one to the other. So if I wanted, for instance, the corporate net worth statement, I could click on it from the gallery, drag that into the included pages, and then I can reorder where I want that to actually show up within the list of, of pages. So I can move things up and down, and I can also click on any of the pages in order to delete them. So once I delete on my keyboard, it's going to put them back into the gallery and I can select them from there if I did want to include them. Once you're done selecting the pages and reordering them, you can then save at the bottom of the report. And that's going to lock in those pages and that order. And then under default, if this is the preferred way that you want to show all of your projections, you can click defaults and then save current page settings for new scenarios. And that's going to automatically create those same pages in that same order when you add a, a new projection. The other thing that you can do is, is add custom pages. So if you want to do something like next steps and you want to itemize out what the client needs to do from here, we can add that custom page then once we go back to included pages, we'll see that that's automatically been added to the very bottom of the list. Then we would go back to report editor. We can customize any of those pages that are now showing, and then we can generate the PDF as we always have. Um, and again, this is all in anticipation, uh, updating the structure and making it easier so that once we release the snapshot feature, um, it'll be fully integrated into these new capabilities. Um, and then aside from all of the noticeable features and new enhancements that you'll see, we do a lot behind the scenes on an annual basis to keep the software up to date. So we've updated things like CPP values, OAS, the tax rates. Um, we also need to make changes as rules and regulations update. So things like the ability to defer QPP until 72, that's been added to SNAP. Um, the CPP enhancements, that's all been added. And then we also, look to add new tax calculations and features um, on a regular basis. So we just recently added the Ontario Health Premium is now calculated and automatically added to um, residents of Ontario within their total tax figure. Um, so that's it in terms of the update that I wanted to share today. I'm going to pause there, see if there have been any questions that have come in so far, uh, and then I'll be able to pass it over to Anu for, for the next section. Well, thanks, Steve. That was that was a really great update. Um, we have a really great questions coming in. Um, just one or actually two questions that I want to ask, which will be helpful for everybody to know is, do we have any checklist um, when we're starting a new case that we can use uh, where we can input the information um, and that will make sure that if we have everything in place before we actually um, start putting it into SNAP? Yeah, so there's a couple of resources available for that. Um, so if you go to our start here section of the help site, we have a, uh, a resource called the Snap Projections Toolkit. So it's got questionnaires, checklists, sample reports, and a few other resources that are quite helpful, especially as you're getting used to the software. So from the Snap Projections Toolkit, you could either use the financial planning questionnaire. That way, if you gather all of the data from the questionnaire, then as you're inputting it into the software, you can either scratch it off or just make a note of how far along you've gotten. The other option is we do have this new financial plan checklist. So that has all of the input fields that are typically required, and you can go through that and make sure that you've checked them off as you've input the information into the plan. Um, so those are two um, relevant uh, tools from this page. Uh, but this article, again, is, is very helpful. Uh, it has sample reports and, and lots of other uh, great helpful resources. Awesome, thank you for that. Um, another question is, uh, when we use the renovation example under additional expenses, how does that look like when, it, when it's highlighted um, on the charts? Yeah, so if we go into client report, that would be part of the cash outflows chart. So if I click on that, 
Now I'll, uh, let me just actually go back and, uh, or I'll remove the base expense here. Um, so a, an important note is that these charts are fully interactable. So if you click on any of the legend items, you can add or remove them from the, from the chart. And this is the renovation. So the fact that we've highlighted it in our input process means that it will be itemized within the legend and color coding of the chart. And you can do this for up to six different additional expenses, which is typically more than enough. Um, but if you ever had 10 or 20, you would just need to indicate the six that you want um, itemized within the, the report. Awesome. Um, and just one more question, because we talked about the uh, you know, snapshot summary, do we have a timeline on when that will be available to all our clients? We don't know exactly when it'll be released. Um, what we what we do along the way is we try to find efficiencies of, of new feature enhancements. So, you know, as we're as we're working on any one area of the software, we want to take the opportunity to realize as much value as possible. So, for instance, with reports, there have been a lot of historical requests for the ability to reorder pages, to you know, be able to add custom pages and things like that. And so we wanted to make sure that we're working on those as well at the same time that we're building the feature. So um, as we identify those opportunities to work additional enhancements in, we will, um, and then we'll look to have that available very shortly. Um, and yeah, it, it'll be the next major feature that we release, but we do wanna make sure that we're taking the opportunity to um, you know, review it with, with people along the way and to, um, to wrap in as much value as possible. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks for that. And sorry, just one last question is, so for younger clients, maybe projection until age 100 might seem like a bit too much. Is there a way when we can limit this projection maybe to five, 10 years, or maybe for a shorter period of years in projections? Yeah. So within the scenario setup, you can go to the general page in order to customize the show projection until age value. So if you just wanted to run this until age 70, for instance, you could update that here or if you have a very young client and they're really just focused on the next 10 years and they don't care about any of the numbers after that point, um, you could shorten it right to the, the very end of their relevant period. Uh, we actually did a recent webinar where we talked about that topic of younger clients who might not be interested in retirement. And we talked about some of the tools that SNAP has to be able to, to plan for those types of scenarios. Uh, so if you're interested, you could go to the help center and then within our webinars section, um, you would be able to review the most recent uh, webinar, creating quick and simple projections in SNAP. And so that was uh, one of the projections that we did was for a, a young client. Awesome, thank you for that. So those were all, all the questions that I wanted to share with everybody and thanks for answering them. Awesome, I'll pass it over to Anu now to uh, take us through the rebasing process. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to make myself as the presenter. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Uh, not just yet, I believe. Um, give me one second. Sorry, I'm just having a little bit of a trouble with the uh, Um, Steve, I'm going to try and um, get out of this and come back and see if that works because this doesn't seem to work for me. Sorry about that. Okay. I'll, I'll keep answering questions that have come in during the session. Yeah. Um, so there was one related to GIS, uh, Guaranteed Income Supplement, and whether that's on our uh, roadmap for future implementation. Um, at this stage, we haven't yet prioritized that. Uh, we actually have a fairly detailed um, help article related to inputting GIS in the software. Um, so if you go to modeling the guaranteed income supplement, uh, we have a few videos and some step-by-step -step guides on inputting that as a non-taxable income within the software. So I certainly recognize that there's a lot of value in automating those calculations, um, but at this stage, we haven't yet prioritized that as a, 
uh, a fully built out feature. Um, if you are interested, and, and I can see you are from your note today, uh, please let us know and we can track the frequency of those requests so that we're always working on the highest impact opportunities. Um, Steve, sorry, can you try and make me the presenter? Because um, I think I can, I, it's saying that it's sharing my screen, but I don't see it being shared at all. Sorry about that. Um, doesn't look like the names in the list. Um, so what I, what I can do uh, is Anu and I rehearsed a couple times together to prepare. So um, I can kind of jump into the projection and uh, and go through what uh, Anu was going to share with us. Um, well, I I guess I could I could walk through it, uh, Steve. If you could share your screen with it, if possible. Um, so let's go into clients. Um, okay, so um, this was the a projection that was created back in 2019. Um, so what's happened here is we worked with Sam and Sarah almost five years ago at this point, and we have their historical plan available. Um, so what we would do when we come into their projection, because it was created in a previous year, instead of seeing run scenario and being able to edit all of the values as we typically would be able to in a plan, you'll see that everything is in black, everything has been hard coded and we can't make any changes on this projection. And that's because it's an old plan and for historical record purposes, we don't wanna make any changes on that, on that plan. So instead what we would do is we would come into this old plan and we could still go into things like client report we could download the PDF if we needed a record of that old projections data. So I've just done that here so that I can reference it throughout our, our presentation today. Um, and then what I can do from the planning page is I can click on rebase scenario. And what that will do is it will allow me to create a new projection that is based as of 2024. So if I click rebase, it's gonna create a, a duplicate of the projection and now we're based as of 2024. Um, Steve, sorry about yep. that. I think it might work now. Can I give it a quick shot to see if it works? Certainly. Yeah, thank you. So I'm going to try and take it over one more time and see if it works for me. Um, can you guys see my screen? Awesome. All right. So thanks. And thank you. And also sorry about that little glitch in between. So well, as Steve is looking into the plan that we created for these clients back in 2019, I'm going to get back into it. And so here our goal is to assess whether they're still aligned with the projections we initially had for these clients, Sam and Sara Prince, and if there are certain adjustments that are needed, considering it's an older plan. And so we're going to rebase it just one more time here. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, before we click rebase for this, we're going to go into client report for these clients and we'll go ahead and download the PDF, uh, which is going to be a copy um, of their 2019 projection that we created for them under the reports. And um, when we go back onto the planning pages and before hitting rebase, um, let's take a quick look at what was happening in their projection back in 2019. So here, um, apart from their employment income for Sam and Sarah, I'll, I'll go under the combined page to take a look at details for both of their um, inputs. So for Sam and Sarah, apart from the employment income, we also had the um, inheritance and the renovation um, as two additional income columns. So earlier we did not have the expense column. So everything used to be under income. If it was negative, it was an expense. So for Sam and Sarah, they had plans to um, do a renovation, which was planned for 2021. And they were also supposed to receive an inheritance, which was um, for in the future in 2026. 
So uh, before we rebased and before we had a conversation with them, they did mention that the renovation was completed and it costed them a little bit more than what they expected to. But luckily, because Sam received the inheritance already, so the extra cost on the renovation was covered and any leftover money was contributed into their asset accounts. So alongside with that, as we scroll a little bit onto the um, right hand side and I expand the capital assets section, we do see that they have these annual contributions going into their different asset accounts. So as a part of my conversation, it did come out that they could manage to do all of these annual contributions and that we had set up for them and they're continuing to do that, which is which is great. So now before I click rebase here, I'll go ahead and, and we did download the report. So it's right here. And now when I go ahead and click rebase, so it will ask us to complete the, the rebase. And upon clicking this, the process is going to get completed. And what I have now is scenario one bracket rebase. So we'll go ahead and rename this. So I'm going to call this as plan 2024, and we are going to click save. So if you're wondering what really happens during a rebase, so the existing scenario is duplicated and one the start year of the plan changes to 2024 and any projected values of the 2024 in our 2019 plan are now the initial values in the 2024 projection so with this rebase projection in place we get a chance to review each input considering any necessary revisions based on the updated numbers as of this year what we'll also do, do is we'll evaluate whether the clients are still on track with their goals. And along with that, we'll also discuss if they have had any changes in as going forward in their projections in future. So with this, they gave us two additional informations um, that have that's going to happen in future um, for Sam and Sarah. First is they want to give gift to children um, at the age of 75 of Sam, about 150,000 which we'll be adding into their projection. And along with that, they want to travel. So they want to have a vacation expense from now until age 74 of Sam, but every second year. So we'll see how we can use our new expense page to add these two additional expenses as well. Okay, so now that we are into this 2024 plan, we see it right here. Let's start from the very beginning, the scenario setup to take a look at the numbers and see what we need to do to update them as we go forward in each of these sections. So um, on the client page, well, they have their first name, last name, the date of birth, nothing much has changed. They're still in the Ontario province. So we're gonna go past this and move on to the next page. We're gonna look at the general inflation. So our projection is going to start in 2024. The retirement age for Sam is 65, for Sarah is 64, and we're gonna continue their projection until age 100. And respectively, the same year for Sarah is going to be her age 99. Now, if you scroll down and look at the inflation rates and the rates of returns, these are the values we had input back in 2019 for their projection. Um, I want to go in and change a few things here. So I can use the projection assumption guidelines right here to take a look at uh, the most updated numbers. So I'm going to click on use guidelines. And that changes our inflation to 2.1% for general inflation rate, the index rate for CPP, QPP, and OS. And it also changed the rates of return for us. However, I wanna track the same rates of returns we had set up earlier and um, only change these values. So it was 1% cash um, rate of return, 2.5% for fixed income, and 6% for equity. So I'm gonna change these. If in case I want to track these values for future, I can click onto the default and say save the current page settings for new scenario. But for now, we're looking good. So I'm going to go on to the next page. So next, we're looking at the expenses page. So this is a new one, which wasn't back in 2019 planned. So here are the base expense pre-populated 67,000 as the value, which, which it could find in the 2019 plan. But as um, I went ahead and had further discussion with Sam and Sarah, they see themselves spending $65,000 annually 
in their retirement expenses after taxes. So we can hover over these question marks to find out exactly what that means. So base expenses, almost like reoccurring lifestyle expense, and Sam and Sarah are happy to spend 65,000. Um, and additionally, as you remember, we talked to them regarding their plan and they have two additional expenses that they want to show in their 2024 plan. First is the gift to children, which is of about $150,000. And the second is the vacation expense. So I'm going to use this additional expenses section that Steve talked about and incorporate those two um, expenses. So let's add the first one. So gift to children is the first one we have the amount of 150000 right here this is a jointly owned expense so it will be split as an expense between sam and sarah for the inflation at this point um it's set at general inflation which looks good if i would have a different amount in mind i could set that value in here as well but for now let's track everything at general inflation now from age and to age because this is just a one year expense i'm going to set up the same from age so age 75 and it's going to end at age 75 as well we're not going to use this gear symbol to change anything because we want the full 150,000 to be shown as our expense for that specific year now because it's just a one year expense the frequency section can be disregarded and we will go ahead and say highlight yes so we can see this expense um, of gift to children as a separate legend in our um, cash outflows chart um, and along with that we want to add another expense here which is the vacation expense so we could call it travel vacation anything we want under description there um, their expense in mind is about $10,000 that they want to spend. It is going to be jointly owned. I'm going to again track it at general inflation. And I'm going to leave the from age blank here because then the software assumes that it's already an ongoing expense or it's starting from 2024 in this case. So we're going to leave this blank, but we'll end it at age 74. So um, just a quick reminder, whenever we set up any ages, we want to make sure under whom are we doing these inputs. I could toggle between the pages and do those specific inputs, but here we're tracking everything as per Sam's age. So this travel expense is going to end at Sam's age 74, and the frequency is every two years. They want to travel every alternate year, so we're going to set our frequency every two years, and we also want to highlight this in our charts. So with now these two expenses in place, um, they also have the, again, base expense in mind. We're going to move on to the next page. All right. So next we have is our incomes page. We're looking under SAM. So um, if you remember in our 2019 plan, we had these two separate columns, one for inheritance and the other is for renovations. But because these two have already been taken care of, we're going to go ahead and delete these two sections. So just a quick reminder, if this renovation cost was still supposed to happen, we could have added it under our additional expenses to show them as an expense and not be a part of the income section. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these two because we don't need these anymore. And let's focus on the employment income right here. So for Sam, um, he still has the same amount of employment income. However, now with the updates right here, we can go ahead and index this so I could either put an, a percentage here or the easiest is to press delete on my keyboard and it will um, set it up as general inflation. Then the type is employment, it is going to be taxable and RSP eligible. So again, the same thing, if our from age is blank, then it is a continuous um, income and the two ages ending at 64. However, for this case, we're gonna go ahead and prorate it to the date of birth or until um, Sam reaches age 65. So I'm gonna make sure we set up his date of birth, which is July. So he's gonna get that additional half year income as he continue to work. And I'm gonna click apply and here the two age changes to age 65. So now, Sam does not have any pension. However, if I toggle to Sarah's tab to make the same changes and updates, our employment income is right here. And we're going to make sure that it is indexed to general inflation. We have the employment, taxable, RSP eligible, the from age. And very similar to what we did under Sam, we're going to make sure that we track 
this employment until she reaches age 65. So we're going to move to 2026, or sorry, um, until she reaches age 64, because that's when she plans to retire. Awesome. So now for anything under pensions, um, for Sarah, she's starting it at age 65. So we want to focus under the column age 65 and after. We have the amount, the survivor percentage. However, the indexing is our old one. So I want to make it to match our general inflation rate. So I've set it up at 2.1. I will also go ahead and click prorating. So then it will be tracked as per the date of birth of Sarah. Okay, so with all of these done, we move on to our next page, which is the assets page. Let's start from Sam first. So now in case of um, Sam's and Sarah's assets, because they got a chance to um, get the inheritance sooner, they, um, they could contribute further larger amounts of money into their RSP, TFSAs, and non-registered after taking care of any renovation costs and alongside doing those regular annual contributions as well. So I'm going to update the new numbers that they have. And um, apart from that, because now they are much closer to their retirement, uh, maybe in a couple of years or three years, they do want to um, put more money in a balanced fund and less under the under the equity. So now most of their assets are actually um, for both Sam and Sarah, it is now sitting in balanced fund. So we will change the fixed income and equity ratio for all of these accounts to 40% um, under fixed income and 60% for equity. So we'll make all of these changes and update these values. So for Sam, he, he has 120,000 in his RSP and here our fixed income is 40 and 60%. The TFS has also been bumped to 95,000. And let's change these as well. And here we have the non registered with the adjusted cost base updated right here. Okay, let's just fix some of these errors right here. So, also just a quick thing to keep in mind is because we have contributed a lot of the money in here, but if Sam or Sarah would have any previous unused amounts, we can put them under these additional settings for unused room for TFSA, for RSP, um, for both Sam and Sarah. And also, as Steve mentioned, our new feature, the FHSA account. So if in this case, well, Sam and Sarah are already homeowners, they cannot qualify for the FHSA, but for clients who don't have a real asset and you want to include the FHSA, we can use our section right here. And also under the assets, we have the FHSA account um, that we could set it up as. Now for the real asset, the value is still the same for their house. However, again, we're going to appreciated at 2.1%, which is our general inflation um, or indexing percentage. Um, it is a jointly owned asset and it is not capital gains tax applicable. It's their primary house. So we're going to keep everything else the same. Now I'm going to jump under Sarah's tab to take a look at the assets um, under Sarah. So we're going to quickly update these values for her as well. So the RSP is at 105,000, TFSA is 98,000, and the non-register is 5,000 with the adjusted cost paid as 5,000 as well. And we're going to have the fixed income and equity percentage similar. So it's a balanced portfolio for them. Let's move this to zero dollars, zero percent, and right here. Okay, so when I click away, we have the most updated total rates of return as well. No changes under real asset, it's a jointly owned separation percentage of 2.1 can be seen here as well. Next, we move on to the debt space. So for mortgage, the balance is still the same. However, something changed under their mortgages. They um, they did have a mortgage renewal happen, so the interest rate changed to 5.5%. And the amount that they are now paying is $1,000 monthly. It is still jointly owned. And I'll go ahead and link it to the house, this mortgage, so that in case they plan to sell off the house sooner, SNAP will take care of the balance and pay out the mortgage first before actually contributing the money into their investments. 
Next, and probably the last page we'll be looking at here is the government benefits. So when we rebase a plan, there are two situations that might happen. First, if the client wasn't yet receiving the government benefits in the original projection, SNAP will take the value of the percentage of maximum and calculate the annual retirement pension amount based on the, uh, on the percentage of maximum updated to the, to the new pension values. And the same will be done for OAS. So which is the case for Sam and Sara? Their plan is to um, start taking out their CPP and OS at 65. Now, if in case maybe for your plan, if the OS and CPP are already being received, then SNAP will calculate the, in, uh, the annual retirement pension based on the index percentage under the um, CPP and the OAS value. So we just have to keep those two things in mind. For this plan, Sam and Sara, we're going to track it as per the percentage of maximum and what SNAP is giving out as a value right here. Okay, so now with this, uh, we're done with our updates for from the 2019 plan to 2024. Um, Sam and Sarah don't have any insurance policies or any education or corporation. So we can go on to the planning pages and let's take a look at some of these numbers right here. So I'm gonna go under the combined page and now the combined page can show us all the columns for both Sam and Sarah. So let's take a look at expenses. Uh, we can see that as they retire, the 65,000 is being tracked. We also have this additional expense, the gift to children, which is being spent out at 875 of Sam and it is adjusted to inflation. We also see this travel column, which is happening every second year, which ends at 73 as it's an alternate expense. Other than that, our income sections, we can expand these to see the details for them. And we see that it's now being um, tracked until um, uh, Sam and Sarah reaches 865 and 64 respectively. We also have the prorating for pensions and the government benefits. And if I expand the capital section, we will be able to see the RSP and TFSA contributions happening for Sam and Sara. Now is a great point for us to actually compare our 2024 plan to the 2019 plan. So I could either look at the net worth column right here, which is a new column that we have um, added into the planning pages, or we can look into the further details by going under the client report and taking a look at the net worth statement, which is the 2023 values for the client. I'm going to look at the detailed view. So for the total value, Sam and Sarah capital assets are sitting at 483,000. The real assets still the same, 408, and the liability. So no changes are done there. And their total net worth sits at 862,000. Now let's compare this with our 2019 projection. So if I go under reports, we want to go under net worth projection in 2019. And take a look at the 2023 value, which is the year end of 2023. So here the net worth for Sam and Sara is um, 623,000, where the real asset and the debt remains the same. However, our all types of capital asset has is significantly different. It is lower than what we had in what we have in our 2024 plan, which is probably because of the inheritance that the client received and they continue to do those contributions into their um, asset accounts as well. Now, at this point, we also wanna bring a few other things in perspective. Now, whenever we are reviewing a financial plan from the previous plan to the current year, there are several factors that impact the change in the projection. So some of these could be controllable factors such as income adjustment, expenses, increased savings. Now, all of these play a big role in creating favorable outcomes in the projection. On the other hand, you'll notice that there are some uncontrollable factors, including economical conditions like interest rate changes, inflation rates changing, or unexpected events like health. And they all present challenges that we have limited control over. So keeping those things in mind in this plan, the plan seems to be doing much better um, than the earlier projection as the inheritance was received. Now, whenever we are doing any plan comparison, we can try and understand what these changes are and how they are impacting our specific client plan. 
So for this, because this plan looks good, we have updated all the values as per 2024. We can also take a look at the charts and I just wanna highlight one more time the legends that have changed for our cash outflow chart. We have the base expense. We also have the gift to children happening at age 74 of Sara and the travel expense that we can see happening every second year. Now I'm gonna pause and see if we have any questions here and um, again, if there's anything that comes up, we'll be happy to look into it in detail later as well. Um, thanks, Anu. That was awesome. Um, no, no specific questions related to the plan. We did have one earlier question related to cash flow management in general, which I think would be a great way to finish off today's session if there's time. Uh, mm -hmm. So once you're done with any of the recommendations or anything else, um, if we can just go into a bit more detail on how the CFM works and uh, how you can control it um, to, to get your intended use case in a projection. Awesome, okay, thanks. I can, I can take a look at cash flow management and great point there. So when, in, when we're looking at a plan like this where things are looking good, when we scroll to the bottom, we don't see any pink highlight or any negative net cash flow which would indicate a shortfall in the plan. We can go under recommendations to use some of the calculators that SNAP um, has options of. One is retirement age. We can reassess um, a different retirement age for the client or available lump sum, available savings, which are really great calculators, or one of our most popular one, the spending um, sustainable spending calculator, which can tell us if 65,000 um, is not what the client wants to spend or if they want to spend the maximum value um, without leaving any um, any balance in their capital assets, then we can use a sustainable spending to calculate some of these numbers. Here, um, another thing that we could look at under retirement goal is the goal surplus here and the goal status. It is overfunded, so they do have extra wiggle room to look at their other calculations as well. So this is something that if you wanna create multiple what-if plans for your clients, then this is a great um, uh, functionality to look at. Now, coming back to the cash flow management question. Um, so in SNAP, the CFM works two ways. Um, as Steve mentioned earlier, we are setting up our base expense at 65, which is the retirement age as default. And here SNAP give, um, ask us what is the amount that the client wants to spend post retirement. And in this case, we have set that up at 65, which is happening each year. And this is called as the automatic cash flow. What's happening pre-retirement are these variable values as we see, which is our manual cash flow setup, where we are able to take a look at the amount of money that is left over once the employment income has been deducted off any taxes, any set contributions, as we see in this case, and any additional things like debts or insurance premiums, which are um, basically fixed expenses. And the leftover amount of that is shown, uh, shown under the base expense. Now, of course, in the first year, First year, the value is much lower because the travel was deducted as well under additional expenses. And the second year, they could spend more because there was no additional um, travel expense or any additional expenses that was happening. So that's under the manual cash flow. When we go on to the automatic cash flow, our, whatever amount we have set up here or um, the software asks us what amount should be, based on this value, SNAP will start to identify if there's excess money left under capital assets, maybe there's still enough employment income or there's still pension values or CPP and OS, which is more than enough to sustain this expense amount. Again, adjusted to inflation, we wanna focus on the nominal column. And based on that, SNAP will either contribute the excess money into the capital asset or withdraw out of it. So if I just take a look at this example at age 65, our clients wants to spend 65,000, which is when adjusted to inflation is about 67,000 plus there's a travel expense. And for their sources of income, we're still looking at partial employment incomes, the CPP and OS starts. However, it's still less amount of money. So we see that SNAP starts to withdraw out of the capital assets and we also have the additional debt to take care of so now if you're wondering how this um, withdrawal happens if i quickly click onto the capital asset we have the first check mark that we could look at which says show the cash flow management order column for this scenario and i'm going to click save so here our contribution and withdrawal sequence comes up which by default is 
RTN if there's an additional contribution to be done or NTR if there's withdrawal that needs to happen out of the capital asset. So NTR would stand for non-registered TFSA and RSP and hence our money is getting withdrawn out of the non-registered first and then it would jump to withdrawing out of TFSA and if there's excess money needed then it will take out from the RSP. Um, Steve, do you want to add in anything here on the CFM um, withdrawal? No, I think that was perfect. We have awesome. a, a couple articles if you want to reference those um, in the future, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was great. Awesome. So there, I can quickly, yep. sorry, go ahead, Steve. Uh, there have been another or a couple other questions come up. Uh, we are running out of time, so I'll, I'll, we'll, we will have to get back to you by email um, within the next day or two. In the meantime, um, really wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, we do have our help site, which we've mentioned a couple of times, if you want to give us a call or send us an email. Um, and then you can also type in any key terms like inheritance, line of credit, um, you know, anything that you're looking to, to model in a projection, and you'll typically be able to find a dedicated article for those transactions. So really, again, appreciate you joining us. Uh, we will be sending out an email with a quick survey to get your information for the CE credit. So please respond to that if you do want to receive that certificate. Um, we will also be asking for your feedback on the session. So if you can share any insights on things that we can improve on, things that you'd like to see in these sessions in the future, uh, that will be really much appreciated and we will take that uh, into consideration. So thanks very much and, and have a great rest of your days. Thank you, everyone.